Next, I'd like to talk about breast augmentation. What are some of the complications associated with breast augmentation? Uh, I think breast augmentation is one of the best operations we do. It has one of the highest satisfaction rates and uh, it really does a lot to enhance your self-esteem, your self-image, your body image. Uh, and it's a wonderful, wonderful operation. And again, accordingly, there's bruising, swelling, infection, bleeding, scarring. Fortunately, these are minimal. Infection and breast augmentation is extremely rare. And one of the ways we minimize that risk is to go ahead and give the patients some antibacterial soap to use prior to the breast augmentation to minimize bacterial counts on the skin. I also give my patients intravenous antibiotics about an hour before the procedure. I think it's important to understand that there are two types of implants. There's saline and there's silicone. And both are devices uh, and none of which will last forever. Uh, I've had women that have had implants put in for 25, 30 years, so they're not going to last forever. Most of the time, what women will do is they'll get it done in 30, they'll come back at 35 or 40 and say, I want to be fuller or I need a lift or whatever. Uh, so at that point in time, we will, we will change it out. One of the complications that I think really is a complication, it isn't, and that has to do with encapsulation. Every woman who gets a breast implant, 100% of the time, We'll get a capsule. And what a capsule is, it's your body's normal response to a foreign body. So if you put two implants in, you get two foreign bodies, you're going to get two capsules. Now that capsule can sometimes get hard and can get tender and sore. So what I have my patients do post-op to minimize that risk is to do post-op breast exercises starting as little as a day or two after the surgery. And of course, at first you go really slow because uh, you just had surgery, you don't want to be too rough with your, your tissues. And so you gradually start to manipulate the implant within the pocket so that the pocket doesn't contract and get hard. And my experience with hundreds of breast logs over the years is that women who go ahead and massage on a regular basis will have fewer problems with hardness than women that don't. Another possible complication is loss of nipple sensation. I have to say, fortunately, this is not a significant problem. Uh, it has not been a significant problem in my uh, experience. Now, again, when you cut skin, you cut little sensory nerves, and there have been reports where individuals will get uh, painful neuroma or a sensory nerve that gets painful after the surgery. This may dissipate or go away once the swelling and the edema goes down. Uh, but again, it has not been a significant problem in my hands. I think it's also important to understand that if a person wants to be too big and they're a smoker, and again, it comes back to that issue again of smoking, we have to be extremely careful because at the end of the day, we have to be able to close the incision. So it's important to understand that once again, smoking can cause poor wound healing the wound, the incision that we use to put the implant into the breast cavity can go ahead and break down and a person can lose the implant. So we want to avoid that. So once again, if you're a smoker, quitting a couple weeks before will minimize that risk. And so really, really, it would behoove you to quit a couple weeks before and a couple weeks after.